come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast. We record somewhere in the area of every Saturday night. A new episode becomes available every Saturday on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Hey, you can actually get us on Alexa by just telling her to play the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. What do you say, Colin? He can't say it because she'll hear it. it. Uh, And then it will create an infinite loop of her playing it on the podcast. uh I'm surprised that that didn't trigger You don't want to do that? Uh, But wherever you found us, we ask that you do us a huge favor and go over there and hit the subscribe button hit the like button or uh give us a review or star rating because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded individuals like yourself who are these internet radio superstars michaela holly toby and i'm colin and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by colin what did we watch tonight well it's past Halloween for it all sure you is. other folks, so but I hope not you had for a good us. holiday. But <laughs> every day is Halloween for us, though, so <laughs> Well, True. I wanted to go old school for Halloween for us, so we watched uh, Dracula, A.D. Mm. 1972, mm. from the year 1972. 1972. <laughs> Boy. Got real creative with the title, didn't they? They sure did. Trying to figure out who directed this, a guy named Alan Gibson. Oh, yeah. Anything, anything to mention there? Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know his work. No, no. No, but it okay. is a movie from Hammer Films. Which we have talked about before on the show a little bit. So what's your experience with Hammer Films? Whatever we've watched on the show. I know. Show. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever we've watched. <laughs> it is a blind spot for me. I don't know a lot about Hammer. I'd say you got to go back and check out one called Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Mm, from 1974, cool. which uh, that's like a forgotten Hammer film, and probably is. I think it's my favorite. We did an episode on that, like way, 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 way back. Yeah. Um, but Hammer Films was a uh, British production company that specialized uh, in horror films. Uh, they got famous in 1957 when they produced a color movie because this is a big deal, right? They spent the money to do color. The Curse of Frankenstein, Mm -hmm. which starred Peter Cushing as the doctor and Christopher Lee as the monster. It was a huge hit. And because of that, then they were like, we got to do Dracula in 1958. Yeah. I mean, how about how many movies have Cushing and Christopher Lee done together? Because they've done quite a few of these. Well, not even counting the Hammer stuff. I mean, there was another competing British production company called Amicus. Mm -hmm. That they were the ones that did all the anthology films. Right. Yeah, we talked about that before. Yeah, we didn't. We did. um, From Beyond the Grave. Yes. And Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Yep. Um, but I mean, I I couldn't even tell you. I mean, I'd have to go look it up. I was glancing at Cushing's IMDb earlier, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, they've done a lot of movies together. Yeah. A yeah. lot. Well, they were superstars, you know? Right. I mean, of that era, I think, you know, and through the 70s, I mean, they were the the guys. I mean, Peter Cushing now, I think, like, his most famous thing is, you know. Star Wars. And But <laughs> prior to that, and he was also, I think, famous for, um, he played Sherlock Holmes. Yes, he did. In Were those TV movies or a TV series? Uh, it was a series, I think. And he did uh, Doctor Who. Was he on Doctor I, Who? I think he was. Uh, he was. He? he wasn't the Doctor, but he was on Doctor Who. Huh. Well, sure. it's original yeah. run. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But I mean, his longest. I mean, he played. Uh, he played Van Helsing in the Dracula movies, and he played the Doctor in the Frankenstein films. Right. Uh, Hammer made. I made a list here. They made six Frankenstein movies, and two, four, six, eight. Nine Dracula films. Wow. wow. Well, the only thing, so, but here's how, here's where the history kind of goes a little wonky. Christopher Lee's in the first one, which was called Dracula in uh, England, and it came out here as the horror of Dracula. Uh huh. And because that's what we do. <laughs> right. Well, because uh, <laughs> trivia, the, no one in the States can use the title Dracula except Universal Pictures. Oh, that, that makes sense. sense. Yeah. That they makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so Warner Brothers put this out and called it the horror of Dracula. Um, so that had both of them in it. And then the sequel was called The Brides of Dracula. And Christopher Lee is like, I'm not coming back and doing it. It has nothing to do with Bram Stoker's book. 
Yeah. But uh, Christo- or Peter Cushing came back and played Van Helsing again. And then the, then they got Christopher Lee like 10 years later to come back. And he was then in dra- all these Dracula movies. And he hated it so much that his character, he doesn't say anything. He was like, I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to be evil incarnate. And so he's like silent. Wow. <laughs> as Dracula in most of these movies, which so, is why I kind of I was surprised we, tonight he speaks. Do we know why he lowered his standards? The money. Okay. I, I mean, didn't like, know if there was more to it. <laughs> well, this was before. I mean, he was doing a lot of horror stuff. Yeah. And uh, actually, yeah, Peter Cushing and uh, Christopher Lee were in uh, The Hounds of the Baskervilles. They were, yeah. The Sherlock Holmes. Yep. That was a Hammer movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think he was just doing it because, you know, eventually they persuaded him by giving him the cash. The sure. Payday, and he said, we all okay. Have, we all have a price. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I think in Scars of Dracula, he speaks, but he, you know, he like all of his lines are basically from the book. And yeah. even in this one, there was a line toward the end where he's like, you try to, you know, test your brains against mine who've commanded legions or nations. Yeah. That's from the book. Sure. Huh. Uh, but this was the first time that we paired up Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing since 1958 in a Dracula movie in these roles. Really? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So this was like an Avengers movie is what you're saying, huh? The like they're up. finally back together. <laughs> this is the thing that we've been waiting for all of our lives. Now, had people been waiting for this? Was this like a big hit? Was it like a, did it draw people? All right. Well, I feel like this is going to be like a monologue for me, but I got history on this. <laughs> okay. So they, I don't think so. I think, okay. uh, I think, you know, well, you, you, it's 1972. So you haven't had the exorcist yet. Right. right? That's 1973. Mm-hmm. You haven't had the Texas chainsaw massacre yet. That's 1974. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have had night of the living dead. And I mean, you know, so still the Hammer Films stuff is it's still going on all these kind of gothic period horror movies. Um, But I think people were kind of getting starting to get tired of them Mm because I mean, basically, they're all the same movie, you know, just over and over (laughs) again. You know, Dracula gets resurrected. He lives for like a day and a half and then somebody kills him by the end of it. (laughs) Right. You know, Um, but (laughs) they uh, don't they don't uh, they don't they don't uh, stray from the trail very much, do they? No. Yeah. It's the same thing. So from Dracula's <laughs> perspective, is this like, is he like living Groundhog Day? Like he every is. time he gets <laughs> he brought is. back and then gets killed a day and a half yeah. later. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> when you, when you watch them, like he, that's why I, th- I don't think you can watch them as a series because when you watch them, it's like, like how impressive is this character supposed to be? He lives for like a day and a half yeah. every couple of he's, years. He's like a fucking mayfly. Yeah. <laughs> and then gets killed by an old man. And then gets yeah. killed by an old man or somebody, right? Yeah, usually it's an old man. If not Peter Cushing, then you know some uh, some variant or you know. But I like I like his uh, his enthusiasm when he wakes up though. He's like, yes, this is my time, and not even thinking like, oh, I'm probably gonna die today because he's gonna show up. No, yeah. he's just like, it's my time. I'm Dracula's back. He pops He's, up like Rita Repulsa in fucking Power Rangers. He does. Like, ah, after a thousand years, I'm free. You know? <laughs> you know, he has the He's same like, optimism every time. <laughs> well, this is the thing, I guess. Like you know, when you're when you're trying to do something with the formula and actually like bring it into the modern day, right? The promise of a title. Like Dracula, AD nineteen seventy two yeah. suggests that like well, he's gonna be running around London like doing you know causing all sorts of havoc, killing people on you know subway trains and it's what we hope for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but either they don't have the budget, or Christopher Lee's like you know I'm not I'm not I'm not hip to that. I'm not yeah doing, not doing that. I so, also also with the the title calling it um, AD nineteen seventy two. For me, I instantly think that there had been a BC Dracula at some point, and that's why they make Ooh, note of that. So. And I was like, that's the movie I want. Yeah. Dracula. Ooh, let's do a Dracula your crossover. Yes. You know that uh, there was a Hammer movie. What, for, was it 40,000, 50,000 years BC, the Raquel Welch movie? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it? Oh, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. that does make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason for bringing Dracula into the modern day was because in 1970, there was a, a vampire movie called Count Yorga Vampire, which I think as far as I'm like, I'm looking at like, you know, cause I'm a vampire fan. 
But as far as I can tell, that is the first movie that brings like a vampire into like uh, modern day Los Angeles or a modern day city or the modern day, mm-hmm. you know, because everything else was these like castles and cobwebs and, you know. Sure. And the classic Transylvania and setting. Yeah. Yeah. But Count Yorga was like a huge hit. And because of Count Yorga, like you can like then there's Blackula in 1972. There's Classic. Uh, <laughs> Dracula A.D. 1972. And eventually somewhere in there, I like, think like 75, uh, Stephen King writes Salem's Lot. And mm-hmm. uh, 77 was uh, Interview with the Vampire, the novel. Right. Right. So like all these authors got the, you know, it's like, we're going to we got to bring the vampire myth out of, you know, crypts and graveyards. Yeah. And bring it into the modern day. Right. How well did they pull that off in Dracula AD 1972? What's this movie about? This, mo- <laughs> <laughs> this movie is about a girl who will not hang out with her grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is about. <laughs> I wonder how many times he asks her. She's not going to do it. He just wants to have dinner with her. That's it. Yeah. She wants to hang out with her weird friend that dresses like a monk. Yeah. <laughs> 70s a- one. Yeah. Right, everybody was dressing like Friar Tuck or something. In that's not a thing. Yeah. That is not is a it, thing. Is that like their weird shorthand of being like he's the class clown of the group? Is I that like how so. they show us? I guess so. And you know, I can't say I was alive back then, but I feel like everything I've ever seen that's depicting hippies or like the seventies culture, I've never seen anyone dressed like a fucking friar. <laughs> yeah. Come on. That's like, there's there's a really wild party that this the movie opens on. And like Holly and I both asked, yes. like, is this a Halloween party? We thought it was because... a costume party because everyone looked like they were in costumes, but it was just the seventies. <laughs> it was just it was that weird was as the aesthetic fuck, of the time. Well, oh, there's a lot of what? Paisley? A lot of paisley. Metallic. A lot, a lot of metallic, metallic stuff. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of, of metallic shorts in that opening party. Oh, yeah. yeah. There yeah, were. The go-go dancers yep. or whatever. What do you call mm-hmm. it? When they dance up on top of Yeah, the, it was a go-go dancer. Well, everybody, yeah, some, yeah. sometime at your hip mod 70s party, somebody gets up on the piano or whatever yeah. and dances. Yeah. I was okay with that. It was what everyone was wearing that was throwing me. Yeah. Lots of headbands and uh, scarves yeah. and turtlenecks. Everyone's got, like, I guess it's kind of cool that everyone has their neck covered in a vampire movie. It makes sense. Yeah. But literally Maybe everyone is wearing, I like, mean, tur- that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. I don't think I can give the movie credit for that forethought of, like, it's a vampire movie, so everyone should cover Oh, no, their no, necks. no. I think it was just, it just happened to work out that way. Yeah. No, I think they were just like the 70s hand everyone a cravat. Like, just, yeah. just <laughs> pass them out. And then a scarf over your yes. turtleneck. Yeah. I, I will, I will give them credit. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that I think probably in London, there were probably a lot of people wearing a lot of very funky clothing, stupid stuff, stupid items. Yeah. Just stupid clothes. But I, I can't get on board with the fucking fryer robe. Yeah. I don't, I don't see that happening. (laughs) Which he doesn't change. Apparently he wears it for like four days. Yeah. Yeah, no. So he's stinky fryer tuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's the smelly friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's that he's smelly kid. Smelly friend. Yeah, oh you ever had the kid in school that was like the designated smelly kid? That's yeah. that guy. But come on, he's also probably the one that's the most fun to hang out with. Maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel. Like I don't. Honestly, I don't want to hang out with any of these people. I don't know. I was getting. A, <laughs> I, was saying, I was getting a real uh, Shelly from Friday the Thirteenth Part Three vibes from that guy. I was yes. like, you can just stop. Ooh, I've yes. had enough. Like, <laughs> and, and, I mean, I, I don't know if our audience will agree with this reference, but I was saying to Michaela, he's the fucking Finn from Gilmore Girls. Yeah, 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 he really is. He is. He like, totally he, is. he totally is. Yeah. Right. He doesn't know when to stop the joke. No. He doesn't know when it's gone past being funny. Yeah. Can't read his audience. Mm-mm. I don't know. I think I kind of would like to hang out with the people from the band. Stone Ground. Stone Ground. Yes. They were, yes. Uh, <laughs> Introducing yeah. Stone Ground. Yeah. So that was like some producer's friend's band, right? That they were like, we'll put Had you in the movie. Been. Had to have been. I I think... second, what was the, the song? Alligator Man? Yeah. 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 I dug it. Well, they played, what, <laughs> they played what? Two whole songs? Yeah. Like two on whole screen? songs back yeah. to back. Yeah. And like in an o- it wasn't it wasn't the opening scene or anything, but it was the beginning of the yeah. movie. They go to a party and they play two full Full songs, yes. yeah, lots well, of close-ups yeah. on too. It was like lots a music for them. Mm-hmm. Like a, it. I wonder if this was supposed to be like a hard day's night for the band Stone Ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Probably I heard something. It was uh, they had a they had an option of two bands. There was Stone Ground and the other one. I can't remember if it was like the Yardbirds. Just happened to or be the Beatles. Was it, was it Rod uh, Stewart or something. It was. 
whoever the other one was, like actually was became legit? famous. Wow. And oh. they, Probably they because they weren't in this ground. movie. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I think they chose wisely either way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like Stone Ground. You got to get the soundtrack. Kelly. Okay. What's that instrument, listener? If you tell me, then if you know, let me know. What's that instrument that looks like a fish and has the ridges on it? You take the stick and you like rub it up oh, and yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy was very enthused. There was he a was designated player of that in his band. the fuck out of that. Yeah, that guy was into it. But I was like, wow, I don't remember that since like elementary school. I don't think yeah. I've seen one of those. Oh, I know. And let alone have one person in the band that it's their job to like, like that's worse than a triangle, I think. I think it is. Was there somebody <laughs> with a tambourine though? Yeah, there's yeah, a tambourine okay. so person a tambourine too. player and I this think instrument. That's yeah. like the weird cousin when you lie to them and be like, you're going to be percussion. Yeah. But yeah. that's what it is. It's like yeah. one step up from being the merch person, you know? Like, <laughs> what does it sound like? It's like, uh, wah, wah, wah. I can't Yeah, it. it's just like... It, it's not really a musical sound, I no. don't think. It's yeah. just a noise. It's a sound effect. <laughs> yeah. You've heard it you know, probably in countless uh, music from the late 60s and early 70s. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Okay, so, I mean, the movie does have, like, a cold open that gets you into this where Van Helsing is fighting Dracula on a carriage that's yeah. out of control uh, in 18, 1897. 72. 72. 72. Sorry. It was 100 yep. years earlier. Yeah. Right. And uh, Dracula is impaled on a broken wagon wheel and dies and dissolves because they, that's yep. what they do. They dissolve. And uh, his ashes are picked up by an acolyte with these awesome mutton chops that have been glued onto his face. <laughs> awesome. I was gonna say, I'm, well, I'm using I was that thinking, figuratively. I was uh, thinking patchy, yeah, <laughs> but sure. You think they were real? No. Okay, so you're saying it was laid on. It was yeah, a, it, it was, was a glue a job. Yeah. yeah, but a patchy one. Yeah. And it uh, it cuts to the modern day then from there, and then we're at this crazy uh, party. It's a crazy party. So the way I understand it, like, because there's all these people in, like, tuxedos standing around. It's a Richie yes. Rich house. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just Posh. aghast. There, yes. there you go. Posh. Basically, it was a dinner party that has been crashed by hippies. Yeah. But they invited Stone Ground to play and all the hippies came with, right? That was my yeah. understanding. I think so. So, like, why the fuck was this band invited in the first place to this event? Uh, okay. It's not weird. important, listener. It doesn't mean anything. Maybe there's <laughs> maybe in London there's, like, a stone quartet and they hired the wrong people. <laughs> Maybe it's a classic mix-up. Yeah, a sitcom classic mix-up. Mix up. Like, so. like on Full House, and they hired REM, but it was Old Lady Trio. <laughs> yep. Anyone remember that? Yep. Anyone? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or their names were like Rhonda, and yeah. like they would spell that yeah. REM, and like yeah. we're REM. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. I remember. That. So glad you guys band. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Awesome. On that one. <laughs> or, or a community when he tells everyone he hires Green Day, and it's like an Irish like poke up yes. band yes. called Green yes. Day. Yes. Exactly. I will never get tired of that joke they can keep doing it for <laughs> years and i will love it it's great the rem was great though because it was like the old ladies were unaware that there was an actual band called rem yeah they had right. no idea <laughs> they were singing like like fucking 40s music yeah it was well, I'm amazing that these people had no idea what they were getting when they invited the exactly. stone ground classic joke and they had <laughs> and they have to call the cops and there's a whole bunch of you know like we're gonna wait until the cops are you know like uh they have to you know the the call has to get called in and routed through stations and whatever. Uh, and there's this guy who wears a top hat and a, a puffy shirt. Yeah, he He's looks like a puffy shirt. He looks like very early Panic at the Disco to me. I was oh, like, God, they, I was like, they stole this look from yes. this character. Did they steal totally. this from the Beatles? Is this where this comes from? The Is puffy shirt. Look? Well, yeah, am I right. Puffy like, shirt and top hat combo. I don't think that's no. a Beatles thing. Not really the Beatles. The Beatles was the, the marching band. Oh, the Beatles yeah. did like Sgt. Okay. Pepper, the, yeah. the band uniform. I kind of just assumed that they were trying to tie it in and be like, this is um, this guy's ancestor was the one that collected the ashes of Dracula, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like, to make it look like he was older and draw the line yes. between the two. But mm -hmm. I might be giving this movie way too much credit. I no, think it I, was I, what they were going for. I think for, you're though, right. And I think they, it's the same act. Yeah. I yeah. think you're right, and I think it just it just works because it's kind of that like Austin Powers look that they would yes. do in the swinging times in London. Uh, so it works. Swinging London. Swinging London. Yes. Okay, so if we describe this era as the Austin Powers era, I is mean, that yeah, yeah, I mean that's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah, late sixties, yeah. early seventies, mm -hmm. probably. So it's uh, it's imagine Dracula. In the Austin Powers swinging yeah, London. Yeah, but that like, sounds way more awesome than what this movie actually does. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Andy Warhol's Dracula. Ooh. 
That's okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to know life, Otto, you must fuck death in the gallbladder. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's the other way. You got to fuck. No death. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this. Okay. So they're doing the whole countdown. Like, no, we've got five minutes till the cops get here. Really? Like that whole scene. I was like, these people all just watched a Clockwork Orange for the first time, and they were like, yeah. we right? can do that. Yeah. They're right? all trying to be a Clockwork Orange so bad. Yes. But like after that scene, it kind of doesn't really try to do that anymore. It's just that one scene that they're really like, we can do it, guys. We you, can be the next Clockwork Orange. So do you think they saw they saw Johnny's character? He like he is Malcolm. Like yeah, oh, for sure. Him. Yeah, that for guy's sure. trying to be fucking. Like, yeah, okay, Malcolm McDowell. I love him, but he's always over the top. Absolutely. This guy's even more over the top. Yeah, than Malcolm yeah. McDowell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, this guy is. Well, I mean, I get this impression from like all British actors. They're all like you know theatrically mm-hmm. trained stage so they actors. Are yeah, projecting for the yes. back of the house mm-hmm. like yes. all the time. <laughs> Fucking Shakespeare in the Park, man. Mm-hmm. Well, they end up mm-hmm. at a like I think from the Stone Ground thing, they go to a bar called the Cavern, which has these bat, it's you cool. know, or spider. Yes. It does webs. look like the Milk Bar in a Clockwork Orange. Exa- that's it what does. I'm it does. Yeah. It's like, wow, they just ripped this right they, off. They really yeah. did. But we all agreed that we would go there. It does look <laughs> cool. I wish we had a bar like that. Yeah. Even though a lot of it, I think, is like, because I'm like, is there anything like, you know, they have it's curtains the, and lights. Yeah. And then it's just yeah. black. <laughs> way in the, but they have an awesome jukebox. Yeah, they do have an awesome jukebox. Yeah. And apparently everything is laced with LSD. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. I mean, they don't really kinda? explicitly say it. Say it I think it's I think implied. The, I think that was the like sugar they were putting in their tea. Um, was it? I was wondering what that was. I'm like, because you was, figure that they're going to get it drinks, right? Yeah. They're adults. But they get like a, a tray of drinks that come out, yeah. and it's, it's either coffee it's, or tea. It's tea and Coke and Coca Cola yeah. with the straw in the bottom. Oh, yeah. They're putting sugar cubes, and I think the sugar cubes were LSD. Maybe I huh. think so because there's a lot of implicit drug use in this movie. It's rated PG. Yeah, but so nobody is actually seen doing drugs. They talk about doing drugs, and there's people who are clearly under the influence. Did you purposely? They don't actually show. Did it. you purposely not tell us that this was a PG movie? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> He's sneaky, Colin. <laughs> but well, PG in the 70s meant something different than it does now. So. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't get away I mean, with half that stuff. Yeah. Right no. now. So. Oh, shit. But that reminds me. I what? forgot to tell the audience about when the, the little treat that I prepared for the viewing party tonight. Oh, yes. Uh, that the original audiences in 1972 got to see was this thing. Uh, so Warner Brothers, when they, they brought it over here to distribute it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they created, you know, because I think, you know, the whole Dracula phenomena was kind of dying out. Yeah. They created the horror ritual. And this is, it was on some of the posters I pulled up and I was showing Holly earlier. Uh, there's like a, a, a two bit Dracula lying in a coffin and he invites the audience to uh, say, uh, say an oath to join the Count Dracula Society, which is a real thing. <laughs> and in doing so, you get a membership card, which was handed out at the theaters uh, that showed this movie. Mm-hmm. It's pretty I think awesome. Thing's fantastic because you know it says yeah. like you have to. You know, the words are going to cross. The oh, it breaks the, the fourth wall. He's speaking straight to the audience. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. great. Yeah, I love For it. For the record, Colin said the oath. Yeah, out he loud. did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> I think Colin's probably still got one of those cards in his wallet. I <laughs> wish. I wish. I looked it up. Uh, while we were watching, like they, so the, there are uh, images online of what it actually looked like. I mean, mm-hmm. it was basically like you've seen Dracula eighty nineteen yeah. seventy two, and here's where you sign your name. Like, oh yeah, I'm cool. gonna be part of the Count Dracula <laughs> Society. Could you imagine yeah. if we all went and saw a movie now though, and they did something like that in front? We'd be like, that's the coolest thing ever. I know. Like, <laughs> someone bring it back. Someone do something yeah. like that. And this has never been. This uh, little thing has never been released on uh, video. Which is weird because the movie was just released on Blu-ray like uh, within the last month. Warner Archives is putting out this and the sequel. Cool. The Satanic Rites of Dracula. Did you see like there's uh, a move in these movies to equate Dracula with like the devil? Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting. Yeah. Because I I was wondering about that when they were doing the Satanic Ritual. He was like summoning Satan. And then at the tail end, he's like. And bring forward Dracula. Like, yeah. oh. Yeah, and he lists you, off the names of all yeah. these demons, like Leviathan. It was like a 20-minute you know, monologue, Asmodeus. like, trying yeah. to invoke Satan. And then all of a sudden, he's like, 
by the power of Dracula, come forth. They're like, what? <laughs> oh, I got to back up just a little bit from the from the uh, the lunch or whatever they have, the drinks at the cavern bar. Uh, all of these kids, or Johnny wants to give them an experience that they haven't had before. And so he proposes a black mass. And so they're going to go and like you know, hang out at this old deconsecrated church. Yeah. And uh, have a black mass. And so this is where they all get there and they're all swaying to feel the music, kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was something. Well, if you're watching it, it's like the, so the real to real tape player, uh -huh. uh, the weird ambient, like tribal drum, whatever the hell that he's playing, mm -hmm. makes them all enter a trance. Yeah, they're sitting in a double circle around a pentagram too. Remember, he said, "Complete the double circle," and yeah. they all sat down. And I was like, "It's a fancy way of saying sit down." Like, I mean, yeah. they all went there right from the <laughs> cavern, right? I think so. They did. So, oh no, no, no. Uh, she goes home. Oh, that's uh, she goes sorry, home and rejects hanging she out goes, with her grandpa. She goes home, right. ripping balls, that's and tells her grandpa to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jessica. Her, Jessica. Jessica Van Helsing. Yeah. Yes. Right. We, we find out that uh, her grandfather is Professor. Lorimar Van Helsing. Yes. The descendant of Lawrence Van Helsing. Yes. Because nobody likes to use Abraham Van Helsing in movies anymore. No. You know what it is? It's Gabriel Van Helsing and Van Helsing. Mm -hmm. Lawrence and the, whatever. What, what do they have against Abraham? I don't get it. The guy who wrote the book, his name is Bram Short for whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they have this black this mask. This is Colin's soapbox that gets right? really passionate That's right. like, about. What the, why don't we like that name? It's not modern enough. Lawrence Van Helsing. Tomorrow, tomorrow there's going to be a whole thesis. Whatever happened to Abraham? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking vulture. Someone's going to write a think piece now that you put it out in the universe, Colin. Someone else is going to write it. And then. Just hope it's not Vice writing it. Within the next oh, year, God, there's right. going to be all these kids born. There. Abraham. <laughs> Gonna be glorious thing. I think I think Abraham's too much associated with Lincoln mm -hmm. to be separated or, from that or the Bible. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Either way. Yeah. 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 How dare something close to say Satan take the name Abraham? Right. Yeah. No. No, <laughs> Michaela. That's the real problem. Well, what's the? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously Dracula is a character that's been done in. Uh, I think I think Dracula is the most adapted or most used character in movies like ever that sounds right it wouldn't surprise me at all so Makes what's sense. the yeah. uh what are we going for here for making him like you know the devil or you know he's the prince of darkness mm -hmm. even though he doesn't do anything he just kind of shows up in churches and and kills people hangs out there waiting for people to bring him women to drink mm-hmm yeah, why is he hanging out in an abandoned church? Isn't like, isn't that supposed to be like not his bag, not hanging out in churches? Yeah, isn't that kind of the opposite? Yeah, of what he should be. Aren't you not well, it, it was a deconsecrated church oh. because they were about to tear it down. Okay, so it's no Still longer holy though. ground. So now it's unholy ground, and he can walk on. And yeah. I think it just looks because the building's with, just crumbling with Dracula being That's all in takes. It. Well, yeah, that's his element, All right? right? I, guess, isn't like, there like a like an actual ritual of like deconsecrating a church yeah. where like they'll the Catholics have yeah uh, yeah there's something that you have to do. I, so, I think in the event of tearing down a church, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they have to do that before. Well, I mean, you know, they don't have to, but you know. I just I feel think you do, it's a thing. Otherwise, it's, it's a thing. holy okay. ground, okay, it's Toby. A thing. <laughs> I'm just, I would imagine him more hanging out in a church like the Devil's Reign, Satan Church. You know, mm -hmm. like that's where I'd imagine well, that's how you go do it. find you gotta, him. You got to deconsecrate it yeah. first, and then you make it into your Devil Church. <laughs> Colin oh, knows the steps. I'll write this down so yeah. I understand. Uh, Colin knows the steps. First, you got to deconsecrate it. Because yeah. <laughs> otherwise, there's a force field, a holy force field that they mm -hmm. can't you know, go past. Um, is that what he breaks through the holy force field and comes out of the ground? He like punches through it. <laughs> was that was it covering the graves too? And he finally broke through. <laughs> I was just kind of mystified that no one had removed the stake from the hole in yeah. the ground yeah. in a hundred years uh, outside in the. Or that it hadn't. Oh, sorry, right. Or that it hadn't decomposed. Like yeah, yeah, because it's, it's wood. It's wood. Yeah, break down. Oh, no. years? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know science. <laughs> <laughs> Quit bringing your logic to this, Holly. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, over and over again, we are told that uh, there's scientific proof of vampires back in 100 years ago, collected by uh, Lorimar Van Helsing's great-grandfather. Yes. 
I think this is also like a staple of like bringing vampires into the 1970s. It's like audiences just aren't going to go with the whole idea of, you know, some kind of magic that, you know, mm-hmm. crucifixes and holy water and garlic and all that stuff. You have to go like now it's a disease of the blood that, you know, somehow we can actually, right. you know. Yeah. I mean, because, that's I that, mean, that's how they would have to do it nowadays. Yeah, Van Helsing in, is a professor in this, and he insists that his grandfather was a professor as well of science. Yeah, and was a, a man of science, yeah. damn it. Yeah, not superstition. No, right. of science. Hard facts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what we like, Colin. Nowadays, you, you gotta have it. When you you're gotta. Fighting, when you're you gotta. Vampires. <laughs> yep. Now you got a catalog like the sparkly ones and the you know. The ones that don't have any kind of powers at all, and just yeah. Ugh. Obviously, 1972 was the dawn of the age of reason. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's when it started started coming into play. Yeah. Um, we should also say that the beautiful Caroline Monroe is in this movie, which makes her as Laura. Is it like her fourth appearance? It's got to be your fourth at least, I right? Think so. Yeah, because she went on the wall with with with, uh, with uh, Slaughter High, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Prior to yep. that, she was in Star Crash. Mm-hmm. She was in Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter, yep. and something else that now I am forgetting. Well, Slaughter High was the third one, right? You're right. Yes. Yeah. Slaughter so, High was the third one. Yep. Yep. Um, and she plays one of the first. So she's basically the sacrificial victim to Dracula, mm-hmm. and he, you know, rises up. Yeah. And puts she the, volunteers for the job, man, and then freaks out about it. I was like, Oh no! What did you think was going to yeah. happen? I was like, tripping balls. He literally or... said, "Blood sacrifice." You don't think there's going to be blood? Like, yeah, it's almost like she didn't believe it, and then it happened, yeah. and then she was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. Mm-hmm. How was the satanic mass in this film? Too long. Yeah. Like most mass, too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but it was it had cool moments. But I, uh, for for the devil, I expect more pomp and circumstance. You know, do some more cool showboaty stuff. I agree. He's yeah. got a cape with a red lining, Michaela. I mean, how much that's, cooler no needs, can no. it? Yeah, he puts dirt and blood in a cup, and that's the ex- <laughs> that's like the height of you know excitement during the ritual. And he just like sets it on a girl. Yeah, just and it overflows. Yeah, then it overflows with blood and gets all over. Then she stands there like just like oh help me help me help me and apparently can't get up. Also, like, the way he cut himself, he should have blood out and died. He's exactly. an idiot. He cut himself yes. the long ways down his arm, and I was like, you're stupid. Yeah, that's how you die, Johnny Elliot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Johnny Elliot. Yeah, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, wow. his last name. <laughs> Is Dracula spelled backwards? Oh shit! <laughs> you know they've been doing that since the son of Dracula. Yeah, yeah. that's but, yeah. Thank God Peter Cushing spelled it out for us and, and then showed the us. letters to it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get it before that. He did. I mean, it was a good visual aid. You know, he tried his best, but yeah. I mean, if he had to do that to figure it out, it's like, wow, man. It's like, aren't you a scientist? <laughs> <laughs> isn't this kind of your thing isn't this like what you like major in right he majors in what is that uh, anagrams yeah. Yeah, going to, ooh, yeah. maybe that's what he does on Sundays gets the paper hangs the, out the crypto quote yeah <laughs> uh, and he's like it's backwards every single time it's just a word backwards every time <laughs> Well, this uh, it's like leads on us the into back the of a cereal box. Science. Right. <laughs> well, I'm sure it has on the been, back too, of the Captain whole... Crunch. Yeah. It's Dracula, damn it! <laughs> um, so this sets up the uh, the we have to get the cops involved because now oh, there's a yeah. murder because they find uh, her body, mm-hmm. Laura's Laura's body yeah. at the church at the church, but nobody goes in the church. A couple Check kids find it. Yeah, very disinterested children. Find a dead body in the bricks. <laughs> oh, the smash cut to them discovering her was fucking hilarious. They're just though. standing there staring dying. at her. Because they were, they were what? Were they on Peter Cushing and someone else? And then they cut, and the kids just like have this shocked look on their face, and they cut down to what they're looking at. It's her head sticking out. They're like, d- yeah. like falling down concrete. And that's it. You never see those kids again. Yeah, like, that's it. Those kids were in this movie for no reason. Yeah. Well, no reason. Find, somebody had to find the body. But we had the whole shot of them playing basketball before that. Yeah. Yeah, that had a weird smash cut to something unrelated. It, the editing in this movie is weird. It's very weird. How yeah. so? It do, it, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. sense. It, it doesn't it make smash sense. cuts to everything, which takes <laughs> a lot of the tension out of the movie when you're kind of constantly doing that. They did. Yeah. They did that several. There was the one scene with uh, Sapphire when Dracula was about to kill her, and they just go back and forth to each other's eyes mm-hmm. like eight times. It's it's like, just too uh, much. Putting a zap. 
No. I know. It took no. too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's a thing, you know, with these movies. It's like the pacing is clearly you know, 70s. Of a different. Yeah. Yeah. I keep on saying it's before MTV. That was the thing that really quickened the pace of uh, editing. Right. I think. Uh, and yeah. up until then, because it really is like up until like 1980, 81, 82, something like that. Everything is, you know, a little more slow. Yeah. In a breeze. I was, I was going to, I was going to say like, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre obviously has a better pace, but that's like an anomaly for the time. Like that's not the norm. Like, cause then I think about mm. Halloween four years after that, that has a very slow pace. Mm. Like, like, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, so what's Dracula's main motivation, uh, for the whole two days that he's going to be alive in this movie? He needs a bride. He needs Jessica. What for? What does he ever need a bride for, Colin? Dracula uh, needs a bride. We all know. Well, this. he has to like drink blood every single night. I've always had a problem with that, like because there's not enough people in the world to sustain like one vampire, right? Who has sure to there are. forever? Yeah. Well, okay, but I mean, it's a lot, especially if think you're, of how many people are in the world. If he drinks one a day, that's only three hundred people a, or three hundred sixty-five people a year. That's like, very true. If you like statistics, figure it out for us. But I it's have not two on Thanksgiving. <laughs> two on Thanksgiving because it's a holiday. It's, yeah, Thanksgiving you eat you eat two yeah. plates. So but you're not. I mean, it, you can't like live in a city where you're turning up a body like every single day, right? I would assume even in like New York, London. Well, that uh, it, like a body a day. True, a day. but I mean, we all know that it's a he's it's a fucking mayfly situation, and Van Helsing's gonna kill him after a couple days. So, I mean, I it guess, all evens out. I guess you can't one a day if you're just leaving the bodies there. But if you're putting some effort into covering up your crimes, maybe you could. Yeah, you know, mm. throw you throw them all in the Hudson River, and you're fine. <laughs> there you go. And you, it's the Thames, and you yeah. have your uh, your acolyte, right? Your Renfield, who can run around and procure these uh, victims yeah. for you. But in this case, he kind of fucked up because he turned Johnny into a vampire. So I don't know if Johnny's going to necessarily do his bidding. He's just going to, they're just going to kill more people. I know because now he has to feed himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of counterproductive. And then Johnny goes and turns uh, fucking Paul Dano. So there's three, three of them now. Paul Dano. It's not actually Paul Dano. It's, it's not, seven. It's yeah. a guy that looks like Paul he Dano. He looks like Paul Dano. Sorry. Oh, Ascot Man? Yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's got the mannerisms like Paul Bob. Dano. Bob. Too. Yeah. yeah, so now there's three of them. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Too many vampires. Too many. Why, why, why did he turn the dude? Why didn't he turn one of the girls? Because uh, this was a reward for Johnny Alucard bringing him back into the. It was like something about his line. Mm-hmm. He said something. Yeah. He was, uh, well, I mean, Alucard obviously is, you know, Dracula. So he's of the line of Dracula and he's trying to bring him back. So it was his reward for bringing him back. Mm-hmm. The power of eternal life. Yeah. In death. He okay. Was, but why did he, he turn was Bob? adamant about it. <laughs> but why did he turn Bob? That's what I want to know. You know, I think at this point, Dracula was probably tripping balls. <laughs> yeah. Um, from, from all ooh, the blood. Is, 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 yeah. Is it like. You guys ever hear about those like reindeer that like, what? Okay, <laughs> here's the, is it like secondhand highness because he's yeah. like drinking the blood of yeah. these people? Right, yeah, yeah. Balls, That's why so. his eyes were so red at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Because like there's those reindeer in Alaska that eat the mushrooms and they trip balls, yeah. and then the Eskimos collect their pee and drink yep. their pee and they trip balls. So it's like that. Yeah. Well, they they've done that in like modern vampire stuff. They did that. On, uh, I think True Blood did that. Where certain they would certain people would be under the influence of something, and then vampires would feed on them to have that influence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they did that in something else too. Oh, it's been and it's been done in a lot mm-hmm. of different things. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I don't actually remember like the scenes where they're doing it, but I remember at least yeah. something about like don't you know, like she's you know her blood is impure. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. So drinking all of these. Uh, victim's blood when they're on all this acid just give them some bad acid reflux (laughs) (laughs) Toby (laughs) that's almost as good as the joke there's like one joke in the movie right where I forgot what it was. Yes. It was uh, I blacked sorry. it out because it was probably so I forgot. Bad. Paul Dano drops. Oh, uh, oh, that's Jessica right. Just, he's it's like, like, she'll be fine tomorrow. Laurel will be fine. Laurel will be there. She'll just be a little drained. <laughs> oh. 
That was actually kind of funny. <laughs> well, this is the one joke. It's like it you like figured the they would have like put a couple more of those in there or something. No, like. no because no this is a Clockwork Orange, Colin. You got to be just absurd, not yeah. funny. And you don't you have enough comedic value in the fucking fryer? Yeah, that don't you have hilarious. enough there? Fryer Finn. Oh, I think you have enough comedic value him. just in all the like the 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 speech of the time, right? Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I was yeah. actually trying to like how much of this am I going to remember for later, but. I can't like you know if you're in a jam you're in a twist yeah uh, and everything every- was way out it's way out man mm-hmm. man <laughs> Peter Cushing has to deal with the indignity of his villain you know because when he fights Johnny Alucard going like what does he say it's something like chill out man or something <laughs> like <that. laughs> which makes your vampires a little hard to take seriously but uh, yeah there was a collection of awesome uh, phrases. None of which were groovy. No. 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 Felt like it was missing. Yeah. Honestly. I really could have used a scene of Dracula walking down like the street of 70s London and like everyone kind of staring at him, <laughs> you know, and he just keeps walking like he's like, like unfazed by the fact that everyone's staring at him. That would be the movie I would write. Yeah. At least. It's happened. It's called Black Hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, true. Black Hill yeah. in that cape and everything. Yeah. Because yeah. this is the other thing I never, you know, in hindsight makes these movies kind of amusing to watch is when they do bring them into the modern day. Uh, these guys still wear the you know black evening suit and the long mm-hmm. trench coat or the the cape. The cape, yeah. Every single one of them, from Barnabas Collins to Blackula and Count Yorga, they've mm-hmm. all got the cape wandering around. Like, yeah, that's a, a daring choice of evening wear in 1972. But I suppose if you've got guys dressed as friars, you can. <laughs> oh, is that why he was dressed as a friar to make it not seem so weird that other people huh. were in like period garb? I mean. That's I mean, a, it's weak, but that's, I mean, God, I tried, hope not. I don't, <laughs> did they try though? Like that's barely trying. <laughs> I uh, thought Van Helsing was like in period garb. Oh, he totally was. That suit he was wearing, especially with like the pocket watch and like the vest <laughs> underneath it. Yeah, it was like I don't he know, has though. a waistcoat. I don't know though. Like posh London men, especially in the seventies, they did dress like that. With the monocle and the, he didn't have they a look like monocle. Know, but they he didn't have a monocle. <laughs> they look like fucking stagecoach drivers from the eighteen hundreds. You know, yeah, posh, posh London men do dress fancy like that. Do or did? So. I, Is it still a thing? I, I think they still do. I don't bring it back. I, I think maybe they dress a little more smart, but not the uh, awesome coats with the big gigantic mink or whatever lining. I d- oh, I that the know. that the yeah. detective was wearing. Yeah. Oh my god, that was awesome. I want that. Was, I know. That was a pretty sweet. I don't coat. think you can get away with that now. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. like, oh, that's a that's a cool look. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Damn though. you, Peter. I don't know. They kind of brought that back with the fucking bane coat. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. The wool. Yeah. Because you can yeah. still use wool. I think, yeah. Right? So still there's cool. kind of a variation that's still pretty yeah. in right now. Yeah. 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 I want a bane coat. Me too. I was actually just talking to my friend about that. We were talking about we want a bane coat. Yeah. It's a sweet yeah. coat. I think you can order those. I you think can. there's a place online that makes all these movie film jackets. Games, yeah, so. filmjackets.com. Yeah. They're expensive, up. but they're usually really good quality. Yeah. So it was like I think they have the drive jacket too. That I, I really think I want. looked it up. And it was like 180 bucks for the Bane coat. Well, that's not bad like for that. how big that coat is, though. It, yeah, it's, it's like not a bad. Floor length coat. Yeah, I would have expected it to be more. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Hmm. I have to get a new coat now. I know. It's a sweet, sweet Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Take note, Toby. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what Dracula is up to in this movie. What's he up to? He is trying to destroy the lineage of the Van Helsings. Mm-hmm. And is so that what he's doing? He specifically says it at some point. Oh. That he is He going, talked? He did. He spoke. <laughs> you. Well, I mean, you know, Christopher Lee talks. You listen, I thought, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah no. no, yeah. You're right about that. You're right. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. No, the thing is, though, I was listening to him talk and thinking how cool he sounds and not actually what he was saying. Because mm-hmm. he has a presence. A cool yeah. Yeah, he does. I mean, I guess that's why when you think of it, I mean, like the guy played this fucking character for, you know, what are we saying here? 58 to 73? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's a long time. Long time. And then there was one, I think he did a Spanish uh, movie called Count Dracula, where he actually got to put, because it was the novel, hmm. right? But it's a really cheap, awful piece of shit movie. But he got to put on the mustache and the gray hair and all that to play Dracula. But, I mean, he was, I think, in probably kids of this era, in their mind, he was he was Dracula, more so than Bela Lugosi was. I mean, 
obviously, I think uh, uh, um, George Lucas and Peter Jackson had that image. George Lucas puts him in a movie as Count Dooku. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Where he looks absolutely. like old Dracula. You yeah. Know? Right. Peter Jackson actually, or not Peter Jackson, J.R. Token wanted him to play yep. Gandalf. Yeah. 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 Hmm. He was he was like you are the only person worthy of playing Gandalf. Yeah. Like what he told him he was still alive, and then he ended up playing Saruman instead. But too old by the time he was an awesome Saruman though. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised yeah. he got in there. I mean, that's what's cool about I think his career. You know, it's like you have these kind of early movies where you know he's doing the horror stuff, and then I think it was like because uh, he, he was in a James Bond movie, he was a villain mm-hmm. Scaramanga in one of the Man yeah. with the Golden Gun. And that kind of gave him another, like, a Hollywood career. And then when that faded out, then there was, uh, you know, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Or no, no, sorry, before that was Tim Burton. Uh, yes. Because mm-hmm. Tim Burton made friends with Vincent Price before he passed, and then Christopher Lee for a number of years, and put him in every single movie that he made. Yep. Um, Up until his death, where Christopher mm-hmm. Lee, I think shortly before his death, and I think I've told some mm-hmm. of you about this, but did you know that he was a heavy metal star? Yeah, yeah, yeah he metal was. band. That music <laughs> video that he put out, like not long before he died, was awesome. Yeah, yeah. If, if yeah, if any of our listeners haven't seen one of the multitudes of how cool is Christopher Lee articles on Facebook or Instagram mm-hmm. or wherever the fuck you find him, because there's a million of them. Research fucking Christopher Lee because he was a fucking pimp. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. awesome. He was like a special agent yes. World War II. Yes. Yes. Like that. yes. Like he was on like, you know, like I can't tell you about what, what I did there. Kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, things. no, he right. was awesome. He's descended from Emperor Charlemagne or something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, he's he got royal. He was ridiculous. Royal, yeah. yeah. Christopher Lee was the man. <laughs> yeah. And ended up his days as a heavy metal star. Yeah. And you can hear, I think, uh, there's at least two albums and then I think a heavy metal Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the one before he passed, right? I it was the so. Christmas was the one? Yeah. He was yeah. so cool. <laughs> but can you imagine who else would be the lead singer in a heavy metal band at like 99 years old or mm-hmm. however, however old he was? Yeah. That's amazing. He had all his wits about him, I guess. At some point, he was a badass. Mm-hmm. He's such a badass. And he plays a badass uh, Count Dracula. Mm-hmm. I just wish that they gave him more to do in these movies. Yeah, and I say that was that was the thing. Like he was a badass at Dracula, but Dracula wasn't really in this movie. He was barely in it. <laughs> yeah, very much. Well, I wonder if like is this the you know it's like you know looking back at these Hammer Draculas, it's like you know I mean basically even the conceit of this one that uh, there's some uh, you know, Hellraiser gonna figure out a way to get these guys looking. You know, people are looking for something that's far out, and you know, we're gonna mm-hmm. raise the dead and do black magic. That is the general plot of Taste the Blood of Dracula. Um, I mean, most of them are all, you know, as we were saying, it's a similar setup where somebody brings him back. There's always an acolyte Mm -hmm. who brings him back to life and he stalks around in the back of the, you know, every, Mm -hmm. you know, he has about 15 minutes of screen time, maybe in each movie. Is that a deficit on the part of the screenwriters that just couldn't come up with anything for him to do or they're like, you know, we just want to, this is what works and we're just going to make the kind of carbon copy clones of it uh, for each film that they do and not actually like, you know, have the guy go out and, you know, do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was how it seemed. Yeah. And, and I think, I think this movie particularly, it, it follows the, the mindset of probably the production company, the thinking, we want to appeal to the kids. So Mm -hmm. like the kids, so to speak, were kind of the center of this movie because they want kind of like a Halloween H2O situation. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I I think that's what they were trying to do. They're trying to get this particular group of kids, like the people that are going to see this movie into this kind of movie. But ironically, (laughs) at least from what I have heard of contemporary information, uh, like the, the time period of swinging London that it, you know, projects in the movie yeah. was passed by the time. Oh well, yeah. Oh, the movie they're, always <laughs> they're always late. They're always late. They're always late to it. In movies, this is the seventies. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. this yeah. movie felt like straight up sixties, but it's yeah. in the seventies by now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like that party. I was. It, it reminded me of like key party in Green Slime. I was like, oh, which yeah. was like a number of years earlier. So I was like, yeah, they were a little. That movies always work out that way though. Once they get on a trend, it's it's too late. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But I think that's you know also why audiences end up going like, eh, pff, you know, it's not. Yeah. See, the, see the Slender Man movie for a modern version. Of <laughs> How many years late is the Slender Man movie? At Seriously, this point? we've got '90s teens in it. No. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, okay. So the movie wraps up, but basically, we are going to have a showdown between uh, Van Helsing and Dracula in the old, you know, moldy church, and. Uh, I mean, I thought, like, at this point in the movie, like, it did actually have a little bit of uh, life to it. There's also a detective. I think there's a subplot with a police detective from Scotland Yard who's trying to solve these vampire murders, and he brings Van Helsing in as a witchcraft consultant or demonology consultant. Um, But, yeah, in the end of it, you've got these two old guys, like, you know, running up and down stairs, uh, you know, staking each other, stabbing each other with knives, and it's all great, great horror stuff. No? And I, I mean, yeah, no, like the idea of it is it it didn't, I don't know. It, it takes too long to get there. It takes too long to get yeah. there. And when, when it happens, it's that part's not very long. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I know, because like I thought, and I heard you say something in the background, tell me when we were watching it, because uh, they run up to the top of the stairs and there's been a much ado about this like silver knife and they get up there and then uh, Van Helsing just turns around and sticks him, sticks Dracula, who falls off the balcony and is like, is that... Was that did that was that's that it. the end of the movie? Yeah. <laughs> Fade to black. Yeah, it's all over. It turns out it isn't. Thank God. It does. There is. Like I mean, a second one. it's almost it. Yeah, yeah it nearly. doesn't go on much longer after that. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys catch when they're when they're right before that final battle lead up when they're going to the the cavern? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Johnny and Jessica Van Helsing were going in and uh, she's like, why are we going in the front door? And he said, the front door is for geeks and newspaper men. Right. (laughs) (laughs) They're so cool. (laughs) They can't go in the front door. They got to go in the back door. (laughs) I was like, what a weird fucking line to be like. We need to make a point that only cool people go in the back door. (laughs) I thought there were cops out front. Well, just say that. Just be like, it's safer to go in the back door. Don't yeah. say the front door's well, for geeks and newspaper. They get their hip slang or whatever. Of, uh, Only yeah. nerds go in the front door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wouldn't well they eventually Dracula is impaled in a, a pit of um, stakes. And yeah, it's like an open grave, and there's a bunch of stakes sticking out, like a of. grave yeah. bear trap, yeah, type thing. Yeah, it was. Interesting. Yeah. Especially when Van Helsing takes that. Once Dracula falls in, Van Helsing has to take the the, uh, The shovel shovel. and squeeze him down onto it. Yeah. (laughs) Stakes come up through his bloody back. That was actually pretty metal. Yeah, I like no, that. that was, that was cool. <laughs> it just wasn't enough of the movie. Yeah. That's what yeah. the problem was. It was. Yeah. Well, would it surprise you to know that this movie was followed a year later by a sequel in the, this timeline? Called the Satanic Rites of Dracula. Which that title sounds cool. It does, it does sound cool. Uh, it was released. He, well, it wasn't released here. I don't think. Like at this point, the uh, Hammer was losing money and wasn't able to uh, financially, like even make films really anymore. Uh, they had a partnership with Warner Brothers, and I think Warner Brothers started, you know, opting not to distribute their films because they were out of touch with uh, the times. And so it was passed up, I think, by distribution. Uh, When it did come out, I think it was called uh, Count Dracula and His Vampire Bride. That's the title here. Mm. Mm. Uh, Now it's being released on Blu-ray, like right now, as Mm -hmm. the Satanic Rites of Dracula. In that one, I think uh, the the cop in this comes back. Uh, He's got a job to finish. That's right, he does. He does. And he has to re-enlist Van Helsing. And the daughter character is back by, it's not played by uh, Stephanie Beecham anymore. It's a new uh, girl plays uh, Jessica. And I think Dracula, like there's a lot of cult stuff going on if I remember it, but there's also some kind of like weird sci-fi shit at Hmm. the same time tied into this. And uh, Dracula is like the head of a business or something, an organization. That's really, it was not. He's a mob boss now? No, it was like the. It was like a pharmaceutical company yeah. or something that oh, was wow. working. Oh, wow. Okay. But He's they corporate, also, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was corporate Dracula. <laughs> Dracula, the investment banker. <laughs> I remember it. Oh, a Wall Street Dracula yeah. crossover. But they did another, uh, another thing in that movie that they kind of do in this one where the writers go back and mine uh, like classic vampire uh, mythology for like, how do you kill vampires? And in that one, they kill Dracula by... Catching him in a thistle. 
All right. I what? what? Now, apparently, being caught in a rose, a thorn, but a but you know, a thorn. You bush. can't just make this shit up because at some point it gets to the point that drag like Dracula can't do anything ever if you just keep adding to the things yeah. that can kill him. Yeah, it's uh, no. Dracula's I mean, allergic to bunny rabbits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when this one he gets. Uh, what's his name? Johnny gets killed by a shower. That's so. a, I have major problems with that. Like, <laughs> okay, so. he was the smelly friend. Clearly, yeah, he was. <laughs> okay. smelly friend. here's the thing about that. Like I mentioned this earlier, but like I've read like the Dresden Files books um, by uh, Jim Butcher. You know, it's all witchcraft. It's an urban fantasy, and running water can ground out magical spells, and so it's used against like magical creatures, magical constructs, and so like I think that's a thing but it's really weird to introduce it and in such a really vague way and have it kill one of the main characters you know but like running water like when you have indoor plumbing that's like so like everywhere that it's like everything is deadly to you at that point you know so like I mean not that this means anything but in the Twilight movies they swim in the fucking ocean like those vampires go in water all the time and so I don't know like that's clearly not something that has stuck with the mythology through time like yeah. you know, yeah, there's a reason we got rid of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean the whole the rose bush thing I think is also a thing, but there's also the OCD vampires that have to untie knots if yes. you throw it in front of them. Like that's a thing apparently if you yeah. have a vampire, yep. if you're a vampire. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that and I love that one actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've never used that in a Dracula movie. They should. It's not very was, oh, cinematic. There was it was no, a fu- what movie? Death by oh, Shower. No, <laughs> there was a fucking movie where it was um um like fairies or like uh, trolls or something that if you dump sugar in front of them and they have to count each grain. That's vampires too. Is that vampires yeah, too? Vampires have yeah, to do that too. According to like old, you like know, they'll stop whatever they're doing and count yeah. each grain of sugar, and yeah. I love that. That's how you stop. It. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I know. I like... love OCD monsters. That's funny. <laughs> how were these creatures scary back in the day? I mean, I mm-hmm. guess just the idea there's a corpse wandering around, but that's the thing. If you can stop it with a faucet, like what's the big deal? Yeah. Why even be worried about it? You know? Yeah. yeah. It is very goofy. Just carry basically, on a super soaker. You're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that count? I don't know. Sure. Put holy, holy water, water in it. It's running water, right? Yeah, you know. Well, that holy was water the Lost Boys is what we're talking yeah, about. In it the was. tub with yeah. holy water. But, and yeah. Again, soakers. that was holy water. It wasn't just water. That's right. That's why that worked. It was in that movie, holy it water and garlic yeah. water, I think, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? They yeah. put garlic in it, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's harder to take. It works in Lost Boys. A shower. Yeah, and they were what, like fourteen year olds or something. Yeah, so, like if they can figure this shit out, then like, yeah, you know, it's really mm. not something to worry about. I wonder if they were reaching for creative ways to kill in this one because it was PG. Maybe that could be. And like, I mean, Van Helsing couldn't just cut his fucking head off, right? You know, like, but I'm, but but make him food with garlic in it. But I'm, <laughs> you know, but but I'm send him a garlic. Here's pizza. the thing, though. Here's the thing, because garlic bread. Here's the thing. Johnny dies in his apartment. Not only does he have windows, but he has a skylight. You could have killed him that way, right? Mm-hmm. Easily, he didn't have to fall into the shower. The skylight does contribute, though. The skylight right. helps, he but it didn't kill him. Like, first. just have the skylight kill him. Don't have the shower kill him. Right. Mm-hmm. You know how hard would that have been? Have it's a just... dramatic cord pull of a uh, curtains because there was. Down. <laughs> that and there was. Yeah. He like pulls it out and it opens up, and he's like, ah, and, yeah. and then he falls, and then he into the falls tub in the shower. And accidentally, like hits the the nozzle, <laughs> yeah, or the, the handle. <laughs> yeah, the I was like, you literally, himself. you literally just skipped over an actual death for a silly death. What are you doing? Didn't even have Van Helsing. Van Helsing's basically going around with a mirror. With a mirror. Like beaming. Why sunlight. haven't we talked about that this is, scene? That is like <laughs> that is like the like most stagnant action fight scene I've ever it's seen in my life. It's ridiculous. Why have we not talked about it? You ever get blinded oh by someone's God. phone in the sun? And that's what this fight is. Is someone yes. like shining like a someone's mirror. watch? Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, oh, you're yeah. sitting across from them and they just get you with their watch. Yeah. That was the scene. Imagine, imagine Peter Cushing holding a mirror, just blinding this kid. It, oh God! The- it would have been so great if he had used his pocket watch. Yeah, oh, it would have been would, great. Yeah, he been, blinds the kid up the stairs. Yeah. Like he goes up the <laughs> stairs to get away from it, and that's when he falls in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. One, and at one so point, he shines stupid. it at him, and it's almost like it hits him and knocks him backwards. Or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he like jumps back. The oh, full yeah. force of the blinding <laughs> yeah. sun. I gotta love that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's, that, an, it's yeah. not a very dynamic action sequence. That's for it's sure. so funny, though. Well, there's nothing that matches uh, Peter Cushing. Is the thing that I always like about him. Not only is he like absolutely deadly serious in any, no matter what dialogue you give mm-hmm. that guy, he can sell it. 
but he also did like a lot of his own stunts in some of these old movies. The original Dracula ends with him like running across this table and jumping up and grabbing the uh, the the curtains and pulling them down and blasting Dracula. Sounds way cool. It is kind of cool. cool. Yeah. That's like the best thing in that movie, of course. But uh, yeah, I mean, he was a very physical performer back then, and now you know, in this movie, he's well. This is a couple of years. What did we say? It's like five years before Star Wars. Yeah. So age he is in Star Wars and take it back a little mm-hmm. less gray and He's always so. looked the same. Gaunt. Yeah. He has always looked yeah. like cadaverous. A, like yes. a skeleton, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a very, uh, what did you say, frail? Frail looking? Yeah, very frail. Guy. Um, there was one uh, Dracula movie that, that followed uh, the satanic rites of Dracula, and that was um, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which mm. we did on the show, which also brings back Peter Cushing uh, and sends him off to the Far East. To fight Dracula, who uh, swaps places with an uh, he's like an Asian sorcerer or something. I can't remember. The guy like makes a pilgrimage to Dracula's castle. So and, not Christopher Lee. No, Christopher <laughs> Lee was like, "I'm out. I'm done. This yeah. is it. Finito." I think he would tell people like in his fan clubs, you know, <laughs> letters that like you know I'm doing this under protest. <laughs> uh, you know, and this is my final time being Dracula. He's like Robert Pattinson with Twilight. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there is a publicity shot on Facebook uh, this week um, of him with all the women from the cast of this. You know, does he look miserable? He just oh, God, it's like you're not even trying, dude. I mean, he's just like the most like, bored looking guy. Yeah. It is amazing. You'll have to see. It. Well, he's seen some shit, man. Yeah, I guess. It's like that he's like I was in Dracula, World War II. Like yeah, Dracula. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess that brings us to the end of Dracula, That's 80, it, 1972. Man. Okay, well, here's... that's it until he's resurrected. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then it'll only be one or two days, and it'll be yeah, fine. Mayfly. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Uh, so what we're gonna do, listener? We are going to tell you individually what we each thought of this movie and whether you should watch it or not. But before that, we're gonna go around the. Or we're sorry, we're gonna summon our mailman, who's going to uh, bring us some of your mail, and that's Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got like six scarves on today. He watched this movie, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's going to have a scarf thing now. Oh, he's always had a scarf thing. <laughs> well, you know that's covering the that's, punch no, 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 it's no, not. It's that's transform. a very obvious he, way of covering it, Igor. <laughs> he thinks he has it. <laughs> Well, why don't we tell the fine folks at home how they can write in and talk to us on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And by Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show tonight. First of all, we have Game Over 49 writes in and says... I've been listening to this podcast since episode one, and I love the progression the podcast has made. Nothing like drinking with your friends and hashing it out over bad and sometimes good bad movies. This is a podcast for you if you're looking into into getting some in-depth knowledge behind some of these obscure films. Happy 300th, guys, and look forward to many more. Oh, that's Aww. awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so sweet. Listening so since nice. episode one. Right? That's, cr- that's wow. dedication. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much. And that's thank a you. long journey to yeah. go on. I've done that with podcasts, and you feel like you really know those people. And I like really that well. he said that we've progressed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man, this has turned to shit. Right? You know? <laughs> I'm always waiting for that email. <laughs> Uh, Travis Legler says, I played your podcast of Maximum Overdrive as I went to Best Buy to pick up the Blu-ray and then finished the podcast on the way home. Wouldn't it be great if the podcast was one of the many cool special features? Wouldn't it be that? You know, I, I would love even just for the sake of our podcast to revisit Maximum Overdrive because I was not around for that. And I, I was not around for that. On that movie, yeah. so. I was yes. not around for that either. I would love to do a commentary. Yeah, on that that'd be awesome. What well, is a machine? What is a machine? Because that movie does not know. Uh, no, it true. doesn't. It's the goofiest thing. Yeah. He, uh, Travis also says, I can't wait for more Stephen King podcasts. Perhaps Christine? Perhaps. That's uh, where it's Perhaps. Yeah. Holly's taking notes about this stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Uh, Will Day writes in and says, Dracula 80, 1972 was my first Dracula movie. 
My friends told me how they saw Dracula, Prince of Darkness, but Scars of Dracula was rated R, so I couldn't see it at the drive-in. I wish I still had my Count Dracula Society membership card we got at the Bijou. Aww. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. I wish. What a great story. I had yeah. One of those cards. I'm telling you, I'd have it framed on the wall somewhere. Oh, have you looked for one? I'm sure eBay has I know. I should probably look. Uh, yeah. Grant Parrish writes in and asks Who's sexier, Lee or Lugosi? Lee. Oh, Lee, by hands far. down. Lee. Hands, hands down. Question. down. All right, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mark <laughs> Harrison writes in and says I've only heard bad things about these movies. I'll have to watch and be my own judge. But what would you think about 1980s horror icons battling it out against Universal slash Hammer characters? Let's do it. We got the Avengers, right? So anything's possible now. So <laughs> Infinity War happened. Let's do this. So we just bring uh, Freddy versus. Well, not- Dracula. Yeah. Same, yeah. Uh, the Wolfman. He's got claws. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Wolfman. Make him, and then he has to get silver claws to take yeah. down the Wolfman. Michael Myers versus. Frankenstein, Frankenstein yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Jason versus Frankenstein oh, makes yeah. more sense. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Maybe Dracula. It'd be a silent first. fight. Yeah, but... the silver knife. Yeah. Oh dun, dun, dun. shit! <laughs> All right, we'll give this one some thought, Mark. <laughs> okay. um, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I dig it. About Halloween, Nick Siebel writes in: Is Drew Sheed Shied, who played Oscar in Halloween 2018, a punchable face candidate? <laughs> yeah, yes. no, he's yes, he's on he the punchable is. face wall. That's for very sure. Very punchable. Mm-hmm. It's a good call on that, by the very way. Good. I was actually thinking that when I saw the movie, I was like, he's kind of punchable, and I mm-hmm. totally forgot to mention it. I feel like the kid <laughs> yeah. from Teen Witch, like not okay, the character that the kid from Teen Witch plays, like in that movie, grew up to be that kid. He did. Like, that's yes. that's the adult version of the kid from TV. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, Steve Coat, 1974, writes in and says, they are already planning an H60 in 20 years. Myers and Strodes will be in the old old folks' home. Walkers and wheelchairs included. I mean, oh. wait, what was... Oh, God, what was the horror... What was the movie we watched not that long ago that, like, had a scene in an old folks' home? Well, Leprechaun has one, right? There was, like, a walker fight in Leprechaun when we watched it. It was Baba Hotep. Bubba Hotep, and then, um, oh God, what was the Breakin'? Breakin' had a scene oh, right. in an old yeah. folks' home. That's oh. what it was. Oh, that's right. Breakin' too had a scene in an old folks' home where they were like break dancing and walkers. So, oh, that was, no, it was in a hospital. Yeah, but there was like, no, it was all old people. No, yeah, it right. was all you're old right. people <laughs> break dancing. Which it was, was you're right. Beyond yeah. plausibility. The atmosphere was there. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, I'm, no, no, we don't need age 60. I, yeah, I don't, uh-huh. I don't need that. As long no. as we're still alive and spending money, they'll make it. Because, uh, I mean, Jamie Lee's going to need some cash, I'm sure, at that point. Maybe this one is the one that's like She's a baroness, Colin. Like, She's yeah. fine. Uh, Jacob Her parents Laws. were rich as fuck, too. <laughs> yeah. So. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob Laws writes in and says, Halloween was a great movie. It puts most horror films from the past 10 years to shame. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's a bold statement, my man. Most. Bold. He I mean, said he said most, not all. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think you get three like really solid horror movies a year nowadays, and that's it. Like, if that. Yeah. Uh, Mike Welch writes in and says, I believe your expectations were too high for this movie. He must be talking to me and, and Sean, who He's clearly did not talking like to it. you and Sean, uh, and Colin. He <laughs> says, Have you seen part six? Oh Whoa. yeah, exactly. We all rated part exactly. All of us except Sean said part six was the worst one. Yeah, we did say six, it was yeah. better than part six. I think yeah. unanimous. And uh, Mark Harrison writes in again and says, "Is it just me or do the Halloween films no longer stick to the formula they established in the slasher genre, mainly having the action kept to a single location?" No, he actually when he said that and I read that earlier, I was like, "You're really right about that." Actually, because yeah. you watch that first one and it is much more of a streamlined movie than the new one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I watched it last yeah. night. It's, yeah, it moves forward. Yeah, yeah. Like every scene, like moves mm-hmm. it towards its inevitable. But thanks for conclusion. writing in, Mark. He writes in a lot, and I like. It's good to yeah. hear from you, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with mo- modern horror doesn't necessarily follow that formula but like that's it used why. to. I think yeah. it follows They're trying to do tried, something new. but yeah, because it follows was so clearly like we're obsessed with John Carpenter. Like yes, that movie was, yes, but like You're right. even still, like their locations are still hopping around all over the place. Right. Well, it's a chase movie too, so mm-hmm. it would be, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and about our the review of the movie Intruder, Gary Lee oh, writes in and says, uh, "Okay, so we had said." So we have a thing here where we have a fictional uh, wall of fame. It's a real wall, Colin. Okay, it's We're a real looking wall. at it. It's Sorry, a- there it is on the wall there. <laughs> All the photos. Don't you everyone. see our picture of Peter Cushing right here? It's the yep. Stallone Staring wall of fame. Let's not forget the man built it. Stallone yeah, no. built it. Just put that up. 
<laughs> so the idea being that if someone is in a movie, an actor or whatever is in a movie three times, they go on the wall mm -hmm. for intruder. Yeah. The lead actress, Elizabeth Cox, <laughs> it turns out had throwaway blink and you miss them bit parts in Night of the Creeps and the race. It's an iconic scene in Night of the Creeps, though, which no one remembers that it's her. And so Gary <laughs> suggests that we either give her honor honorable mention or the hallway of fame. The whole, I like Ooh. the hallway. <laughs> the hallway. I like that. That's a good, that's not bad. It's a good suggestion. The hallway of fame. <laughs> All right, good move. Uh, so that brings us to the most exciting moment of the night where we're going to throw Dracula AD to the wolves. Michaela, or what did you think <laughs> of Dracula AD 1972? I mean, the title sounds really cool, right? You're like Dracula in the fucking swinging 70s. It's going to be ugly, which it is. <laughs> it's going to be loud. Like everything about it is going to be ugly and loud. The outfits, the music, the people, like... It's going to be all the most, like, offensive to your senses things, like, rolled into one. And it's, like, maybe maybe that's what London was like in the 70s, but, like, American 70s was much more obnoxious than this movie was. Mm -hmm. um, and I could have done with some more, like, 70s cheese. I mean, I know they're going for, like, a, st a straight horror movie, I guess. Were they? I don't well, know. Well, they don't know that, it's, that <laughs> yeah. we would see it as cheesy. It was, like, yeah. very contemporary, I think, when they, but, they like, thought they were. <laughs> Oh, but it's still God. meant to be scary, though, though, being a PG movie. Like, like I don't know who this is for. Yeah. I don't know who this movie's for. Yeah. And uh, I, like, obviously, like I said, if I were to write it, it'd be more of like a comedic beat. So it'd probably yes. be more like Dracula Dead and Loving It than like yes. an actual horror movie. <laughs> just but, go Dracula. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God, I would I be so that. down for that. Just like, yeah. It'd be just like a fish out of water situation, Isn't right? It love In it the first 70s. Bite? Yeah, they, that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, and there's a David Niven one called Old Dracula, which mm -hmm. I think is the same thing. Uh, it started real strong with that awesome party and Stone mm -hmm. Ground playing. I was like, wow, we're in for some like real time capsule shit here. Yeah, uh, but then it quickly loses that, and it doesn't really keep up that same way it started. Um, and so I, I, it was too slow, and there was too many moments I didn't care about and didn't move the pace quick enough for me and all the cool stuff that happens at the end is the shortest part of the movie so I do not think I would recommend it Holly um yeah I, I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling the same way um it started out pretty strong and actually the the music just starts out right away and you're like yeah I'm, I'm like in funk this. guitar what genre is that yeah slap, slap bass. it's like that it's yeah funk. it's like that 70s it's slap funk. bass you know yeah. when you hear it yeah, it's it's borderline like porn music, borderline, but it's got a little more edge to it, so it's a little cooler. Um, but yeah, they get you right away with the music, and and I was I was in the party scene. I was like, this is gonna be great. Um, but I agree with you. They quickly lose that momentum, and it never really comes back. Um, it it definitely lacks that. Well, it lacks Dracula. If I'm being honest, yeah. like it's a Dracula movie, and he's hardly in it at all, and. I don't know if I'm watching a Dracula movie. I want Dracula to be in it, so that kind of didn't that didn't really hold my my interest because I didn't really care about these kids. I just wanted to see vampires, and I, I was down with like the satanic ritual stuff when they first started doing that. But even that, it, it didn't it didn't really work for me. I didn't really know where they were going with anything. That, that's kind of the whole movie. I, they, I didn't know where they were going with anything. It, I agree with you, Michaela. I don't know who this movie was for. I don't think they really know who they were making it for. Um, so, yeah, it just it kind of lacked something. It, the potential was there. There were moments that were really fun, but it didn't have enough to keep my interest. So I got to say, I would not recommend Dracula AD 1972. Toby? Toby? Um, I would have to agree with you both. I think the movie lacked a consistent tone and pace. Um, I feel like parts of it were written by different people and it was somehow just all kind of edited together. Um, I will say that there were parts of it that I found really interesting and parts of it that were really funny. Mm -hmm. um, I liked kind of seeing a, a snapshot of what I guess would have been that time period in London. Yeah. Um, Stone Ground was obviously the best part of the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I also, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I kind of love that there's just a bunch of like bored teenage, well, not, they're not teenagers, but a bunch of bored like young are adults. They, Do we know how old they are? I have no idea how old they are. Yeah. But they're just like, they're so <laughs> bored that they're just like, hey, 
you want to try Satan worship? And they're like, yeah. yeah. I think that's a British thing. <laughs> is it? I mean, that's where the, is that a British the thing? The Hellraiser, right? Because they're so isolated in that island. So like, they're and just they cut off from history culture. history yeah. of like, you know, devil worship and black mass or whatever. Yeah, That's exactly that how Aleister Crowley got started. He was just bored. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> drop some acid one night there and, you, you know, that's where things progress from. Um, I don't know. Altogether, there were parts of it that I thought were really interesting, uh, parts of it that were really funny, parts of it that didn't make any fucking sense. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying it, but I would recommend watching it once. Okay. Whoa. Rent, don't buy. All right. It is available. To on rent? Amazon. Oh, yeah. You okay. can get it everywhere. Oh, Amazon Prime's got everything. They do. Remember, yeah. we've they talked about how they have literally everything. everything. I love yeah, Amazon they Prime. They were just holding it back from, well, I mean, the Warner Archive isn't even like a legit, like on the shelves release. It's you, you can order it and get it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's, uh, um, I think you're all crazy. This is a ton of fun. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I mean, again, it's, I think this is my favorite of the Hammer Draculas, and I've watched them all. And I you know, recently I went back as Halloween was coming up, and for some reason, like this is, I don't remember how I got onto the kick, but every once in a while you go on one of these, like you know, and you're gonna watch them all, and some of them were just, uh, and I've obviously I've seen them all before, but revisiting them, I'm like, man. I can't make it through these movies the way that I used to. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all very lethargic. And the pacing, it's just, you know, it's a, uh, we've moved past it. Because it's not like I would I would fault anything with the production of this. It's like they're doing things that, you know, with the camera and with, the, you know, it, it's a competently directed movie, but of its time, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming that Alan Gibson is like an older guy. You know, who was, you know, yeah. in, you know, 40s to on up that was hired to do this and wasn't like the 20 something Toby Hooper who's like, you know, we're going to go and make a movie like this, or, you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, but so formally, I think it's OK. Um, but I think the the thing that really hampers all of these movies um is and this is i guess you know there's two things one of them is also shared with the universal movies where every movie is basically exactly the same as the one before it you get some new characters but they all say serve the same function Mm -hmm. and your bad guy the mummy you know goes into the ground at the end of the last movie somebody feeds him tana leaves he comes back and he staggers around and they put him in the ground again and dracula you know and all the dracula movies it's exactly the same um so that's one and two is at this point where we are looking back at these, we know way too much about vampire lore and vampire mythology. Mm-hmm. Now I assume, I assume that, you know, people in 1972 also had like a, you know, an awareness of this stuff, having watched these movies for, you know, since like the thirties. Right. Um, you know, since the original Dracula, but there's, a time in each one where somebody has to explain to you, you know, this is what a vampire is afraid of. This is how <laughs> the you vampire kill exposition. Yeah. yeah, the vampire <laughs> exposition. Exactly. Yeah, the, the one in this movie goes on for like a long I don't know how time. many pages it was. And again, there's nothing wrong with the scene by itself, taken out of time, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Because now it's like, right, I know this, so let's let's uh, go, let's, let's move go on. For, yeah, you know, so it's like, can I fault the movie for that, or is that just you know us a product of its time? And, yeah, yeah. Um, right. But I I suspect that audiences of the time were also you know relatively sophisticated, you know, especially the audience who would go see this movie, and they were probably having the exact same problems, right? Um, but uh, beyond that, I think like it's it's a it's a groovy movie, man. I mean, like all this crazy, <laughs> yeah. swing, you know, it, yeah, it that's what makes it more palatable to me and more fun than the other the period Dracula movies is the setting uh, is the characters running around and, you know, coming off with all these, you know, bizarre fashion choices <laughs> and bizarre, you know, 1970s lingo. Uh, it, and actually, I mean, I actually think up until dracula is introduced in the movie it's a good like 20 to 30 minutes uh the movie actually is pretty well working Mm -hmm. you know for me 
because you've got the flashback, you've got the introduction to the kids, the introduction of Van Helsing and, and his niece, and then they go to, you get the cavern, and then they go to the Black Mass, and then, you know, all that stuff happens, and Dracula comes back. It's after that that it kind of starts hitting the brakes. Yeah. You know, and we lose that kind of forward propulsion, and then it kind of picks it back up again toward the end. So, I mean, ultimately, I would recommend the movie, but you have to know going into it, it is, you know... And again, I've watched a lot of these films, so I have a tolerance for that kind of pacing, uh, you know, just kind of looking back at it historically. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I would definitely recommend uh, that you check out, you know, the, uh, you know, we're watching it for Halloween and this is the kind of stuff that goes a long way with me. You know, the foggy graveyards and the moldy old yeah. crypts and the, <laughs> you know, uh, that's, you know, old classic horror. So, um, yeah, you should check it out. It's on Blu-ray right now from the Warner Archive, Dracula AD 1972. Mm. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Sean! <gasps> and he's not here. He's not here. Michaela, what's the, Sean the watching? Do you know? <laughs> the Ghost of Sean says we're going to watch My Soul to Take next week. Ah. Which is Wes Craven's <laughs> final movie, right? Scream 4 was. Scream 4, Scream was, 4 was, was, yeah. yeah. Which I think we've also done. Yeah, we did. We did. I show. did it last year. Okay. Yep. yep. So we're going to watch another Wes Craven movie, seeing as how we just did one on uh, <laughs> People Under the oh, Stairs for Oh, this is like, what, our fifth or sixth Wes Craven We've movie done a few. Point. We've done a few. Yeah, this is going to be tied like with Sylvester too. Stallone yep. on that wall yep. pretty soon. We're going to have to call it the Wes Craven slash Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> the Stallone wall. The Wes Stallone wall. <laughs> yep. The uh, the rivalry continues. And you didn't even know it was a thing until now between <laughs> Sylvester Stallone and Wes Craven. So until then, uh, ladies and germs, we hope you have a good uh, evening, day, or whatever you're doing on your long commute. Thank you for listening to us. And until next time, the basement is going dark.